Hey guys, just wanted to go over a couple of scriptures here from 1 Timothy chapter 6. It's just the first part of chapter 6. I'm going to go ahead and read it. I thought it was really powerful. I was reading it here and I just wanted to make a quick video about it. So bear with me. It's 1 Timothy chapter 6 and it's going to be verses 1 uh, through 6. It says, Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor. In the name of God and in the name of doctrine be not blasphemed. Verse 2, And those who are believing masters must not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit these things teach and exhort. It's walking in love as Christ. It's, it's loving the brothers, showing them what true love is in Christ's name. Christ showed us what true love is. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness... He is proud, knows nothing, but dotting about questions and strife over words which cometh envy, strife, railings, evil suspicions, perverse disputings by men of corrupted minds, and destitute of the truth, suppose the gain of godliness from such withdraw thyself, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So it's godliness is what we need to be pursuing. And the message of Jesus through salvation is pure godliness and what we need to be going after because we are dead in sin before Christ. And once Christ came, died for the sins, we can now repent of the sins, know God, and train ourselves for godliness. And the scripture is saying here that if any other doctrine or any other teaching, which doctrine, the meaning of doctrine means teachings, um, which just means teaching, so Christ's teaching. If anybody else teaches you differently, they're saying, uh, God's saying that he knows nothing, he's proud, uh, he envies, he strives, he has evil suspicion. So any other doctrine but the actual word of God and what Jesus Christ said made by man, it, it, it doesn't hold up. We have a standard basis of everything of what God said from the New Testament and the Old Testament, and they line up together. Everything the prophets prophesied from what God said back in the Old Testament, everything that Jesus said and the disciples uh, taught lines up with the Old Testament. So we have a standard of basis, and everything that the Old Testament has said has come true. I mean, we can go from where the ark landed. We can go from where the Red Sea was parted and find chariot wheels. We can find Lot's wife as a pillar of salt. We can find the same rock that Moses split. Jesus is changing lives rapidly left and right. Demons are being cast out. People are getting healed. Um, everything that he said in Matthew chapter 24 is coming to play with wickedness on the rise. Everything he said in Luke in the end of times with the apostle uh, John prophesied on the island of Patmos in Revelation is coming to play. So everything that the Word of God literally has, has said is coming to play. There's a standard of basis of truth behind, and that truth is Jesus Christ. And if we don't, if we study any other doctrine or anything other than the Word of God, it's complete. It, it's opposite of godliness. They know nothing. It's evil, and it goes against the actual true God. That's why we need to be getting into this. The, the doctrine, which is the teachings, and the word of God, of which Jesus Christ um, has said and taught us, which is all through the New Testament, and just really get into the gospel, because it's saying here that the gospel is the only doctrine in which teachings Christ had is the only, only true way of life, the only true way to live, and there's a standard basis of facts, evidence that back that up. It's the only truth. So I wanted to go to Revelation 22:19. This is a scripture that I like to use a lot, too, if... Uh, there's like Mormons or um, Jehovah's Witness that knock on the door. I like to go to this scripture too because it's just the, the doctrine and the words of Jesus Christ that it doesn't line up with it. If anything doesn't line up with the actual word of God and what Christ taught, it's evil. It knows nothing and there's no standard of basis to it. But I wanted to go to Revelation 22:19. It says, if anyone takes away from from the scroll of the prophecy, God will take away that person and the share of the tree of life and the holy city, which are described in the scroll. And then 20, excuse me, 18, if we go back one, if we go back one, one scripture, so it's Revelation 22, 18 and 19, it says, I warn everyone who hears the word of the prophecy of the scroll, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to that person the plagues described in the scroll. And then 19 says, if anyone takes away the words from the scroll of 
prophecy, God will take away that person, a share a tree of life in the holy city, which is described in the scroll. So we need to be getting in with the word of God, really praying, studying what Christ taught, studying the actual true word of God and his doctrine, his teachings, because that's the only true pure doctrine and teachings. And like I stated earlier, it's the standard of basis behind it. We know it. We have facts, proof, evidence. So we have, um, we have the whole... Uh, life of, of faith and abundance to where we can we we have it we know we know what the truth is we know what what God said and if anybody takes away or adds to it God will take away his life from from the from the from the scroll and God will add to the plagues if he adds to it so we need to be studying only God's word only God's doctrine and what Christ taught and everything that uh, from the Old Testament the prophets to the New Testament from the Apostles because it all lines up. Everything in the Word of God lines up together perfectly. It's all um, God-breathed. It's all inspired by God. Um, so we can go to God's actual doctrine, His Word, His teachings, and only focus on that. And that's what we need to be doing. And it's it's the actual um, life and teachings that, that Christ showed us while He was here that really shows us who we are and, and, and shows us what love is because him being love himself coming in the flesh and showing us who we are, how to live, how to love, we are now able to actually love now because we have, we have the actual origin of love who lives inside of us and we're to study his doctrine, his teachings and only his teachings which is the 66 book love letter that he wrote because he is love. So God bless you guys.